When I was a willing worker in the red beads, I learned more than statistical theory. I knew that the system would not allow me to meet the goal, but I still felt that I could. I wanted to. I tried so hard. I felt the responsibility. I felt that others were dependent on me. My logic and emotions conflicted. I was frustrated. Logic said there was no way that I could succeed. Emotions said I must try. That's part of a letter to Dr. W. Edwards Deming from Ann, a willing worker in one of his red bead experiments. Willing workers in these experiments often say that they knew it was a game and quickly realized they couldn't win, but they tried anyway. They wound up frustrated by a system that would not let them do their work in which they were powerless to change. But the red beads is only a game. The question then becomes, what happens to the men and women whose paychecks and futures depend on their performance in businesses and industries, most of which are run exactly like the red bead experiment? After it was over, I thought about my own work situation. How often are people in a situation that they cannot govern, but wished to do their best? And people do their best. And after a while, what happens to their drive, their care, their desire? For some, they become burned out, tuned out. Fortunately, there are many that only need the opportunity and methods to contribute. The willing workers illustrate two lessons. First, Workers will try to do their jobs even when they know they cannot. And second, doing your best doesn't matter unless you know what to do, why you are doing it, and how to do it. These control limits tell you the variation of the system. If we have a system, first of all, you heard the foreman's procedures, his instructions pour the distance of eight centimeters into the smaller vessel from the corner. They were rigid. Second, we have the data, the figures, either in the form of the table or the chart. There are the figures. We have the control in it. I would conclude we have a pretty good stable system. The willing workers put forth the best efforts. Under rigid conditions, they conformed to procedures that there was wide variation in results from one worker to another. Same worker from day to day might jump all the way from uh, the best worker down to the worst one next day. The variation came from the system. The system is a responsibility of management. People work within the system. Management is responsible for the system. The management had uh, apparently set a price for white beads without knowing the cost of producing white beads without a business. They could have learned something about the cost. Uh, after the first day, there was a little bit of information about cost. There was no attempt to improve the incoming material. It was the same day after day. No improvement. Management's job is to improve the incoming material, improve it. I remember that. It's number four of the 14 points. Right. Stop doing business on price tag alone, choose a supplier, and work with that supplier to improve the material. But while that's going on, never overlook the obvious. Sell the red beads. Exactly. If you've got a customer for white, maybe you could find a customer for red. You don't know until you look. But management has to do the looking. The worker can't. Field on the job are helpless. They were, they were helpless. They could not bring about improvement.
they could only work and try to do their jobs. They represent people all over the world, on the factory floor and in management, working within a system, doing their best, handicapped by the system, unable to make improvements. Because management was blaming the willing workers instead of improving the system, and because it was raiding the workers, management made yet one more bad decision. And the management decided instead of closing the place down, because costs were overrunning revenues, instead of closing it down, they would keep the place open with the best workers. Sounds great. Fantastic contribution to management, one would say. Unfortunately, it didn't work. I'm afraid the Western management is great on management of failures. Too late. We need to work at causes of failures. Department of Transportation showed a few days ago in the newspapers a uh, distribution of uh, proportion of flights uh, behind time, whatever that is, for various airlines. Department of Transportation should help the airlines, not just rate them. Rating doesn't solve any problem. That's management of failure. Costs are not causes. Costs come from causes, and we need to work on the causes. Those are lessons that come out of the red beads. Performance of anybody, almost anybody, is governed almost entirely by the system that he works in. So when you, uh, when you rate people, you're really rating the system. And the people, you see, that won the game did not turn out to be best in the future. In actual life, it may be that 98% of performance comes from the system. Most of what we observe comes from the system, not from people's uh, efforts. Their output is governed by the system, and management is responsible for the system. That's a lesson.